In this video, we're going to discuss the Prepper Phone. So this is a project that I've been working on for a while now, collaborating with other YouTubers on what the ideal configuration of a smartphone would be for preppers. So for preppers, we're into things like security, privacy, in addition to capabilities that we could get from the apps on our phone that we would use for EDC purposes and also want to be able to use in offline or grid down situations. So for this video, we're going to discuss all of those things ranging from exterior modifications to the phone to OS level modifications to make us a little bit more secure in addition to some of the apps that a prepper would have on their phone. So let's get started now with this video featuring the prepper phone. Now, of course, most preppers should probably just not even have a smartphone or just have a phone that's only capable of doing voice and text to help get us a little bit more off grid. But most of us preppers like having the capabilities that a smartphone is able to provide. So there's a lot of information that we're gonna cover in this video. I made a PDF document with everything that we're gonna discuss. I'm pretty happy with this PDF document. It's one of my better ones. So it provides a list of all the various configurations that we're gonna do from the OS level, the exterior modifications, in addition to the apps for both Android and iOS. So make sure you download that PDF document. It has a list of everything that's gonna be covered in this video. So just as a heads up, this video is probably gonna gear more towards Android because I'm an Android user. I'm not a big fan of the Apple fanboys that wait in the mall for the new iPhone to come out. I'd rather just get an unlocked Android phone, put my SIM card in it and be on the go for it and for a lot less money. But I am gonna include both iOS and Android links for the various apps that are gonna be included in this video. Before diving into all of the various OS level modifications and app installations, let's first talk over the physical add-ons and modifications that I include on all of my mobile phones. Number one, use a protective case for your phone. We all probably already do this, but if you don't already, I recommend including one. It's not just used for protecting your device, but I also use it as a method of storing small, thin items in the back of the phone for EDC or emergency purposes. We'll talk about that more later. Number two, use a wired headset. I am no longer using wireless headphones like Bluetooth with my electronic devices due to EMF concerns. I recently purchased a nice EMF reader and I'm not wanting to see that amount of RF going directly towards my brain. Stay tuned for a dedicated video on this topic in the future. Number three, use a Faraday bag on occasion. I like to go digitally off grid from time to time using a Faraday bag to ensure that my whereabouts are not being tracked. I like to think of this like a whale or dolphin coming up for air and then going underwater again. I come up for air from time to time for my digital data, and then I put my phone back in the Faraday bag to completely take it off grid when I desire. I've been enjoying the silent pocket Faraday bag for my mobile device. A bulkier but less expensive option is the Mission Darkness Faraday bag. Number four, attach a camera cover. I cover the selfie camera of my mobile devices and my laptop webcam with an ultra thin camera cover. When it's not actively in use, I have it in the closed position so a hacker can't use the camera to spy on me. These are super easy to install and gives me peace of mind. I don't use one on the rear facing camera because normally I have my device sitting on flat surfaces with the screen facing up, so it's technically covered already. Number five, insert a micro SD card for extra storage. I have a 256 gig micro SD card inserted in my phone to allow me to have a completely offline copy of Wikipedia for emergency purposes. I use Kiwix for viewing the Wikipedia offline documentation, including the pictures. I also have additional emergency information stored on that micro SD card, which we've covered in a previous video. Number six, I store a tiny SIM tray tool behind the protective case of all of my smartphone devices, just in case I need to move my SIM card from one device to another. Also stored behind that protective case, I have a Band-Aid. And lastly, stored behind that protective case, I also store a $20 bill for emergency cash, just if need be. And those are all of the physical add-ons and modifications that I do to the exterior of my mobile device. Now let's go over the various privacy and security measures that I take from an OS level. Privacy and security is a major concern that I have when using a smartphone. Again, you should probably just get rid of your smartphone altogether and go with a dumb phone that just has voice and text. The Nokia 3310 is a popular option for a lot of people concerned about privacy. The Purism Librem 5 and the Lightphone 2 phones are good options as well, but a little expensive right now for my taste. Let's just assume that you would prefer to keep your smartphone. Just as a heads up, in this video, I am not gonna be featuring a custom ROM as the 
the OS for this prepper phone, although I do know that this is the best approach for truly being more private on your smartphone device. There are a lot of great ROMs out there, such as Lineage OS, Copperhead OS, Paranoid Android, AOSP Extended, and more. However, I wanted this video to be more widely accessible for the average smartphone user who isn't interested in flashing new OSs on their device. Basically, I wanted to feature things that my mom or wife could do to the smartphone that they already own. I've been experimenting with many different custom ROMs on a different device for testing purposes for a few years now, and I may do an update to this prepper phone video in the future that features one. Here are some tips to make your phone a little bit more secure from hackers and to add a little bit more privacy to your life. There's a really great video on the YouTube channel, The Hated One, which featured a lot of the information in a video titled, How to Protect Privacy on Your Phone in Five Minutes, a Tutorial for Normies. You should definitely check it out. Here are the primary tips that I have leveraged from that particular video to help protect privacy on my phone. Number one, get an application firewall. The Hated One recommends NetGuard for Android and Lockdown for iOS. These are used to block network access to apps that don't need it. Please note that this will take the only available spot for a VPN on your phone, but according to The Hated One, that's fine. Next, don't rely on a VPN. As The Hated One mentions, most apps have access to your phone through GPS, Wi-Fi, and cellular triangulation. Most of the websites that we go to are already encrypted with HTTPS anyway. So The Hated One mentions that this renders VPN kind of useless. To him, blocking unwanted network access altogether does much more than rerouting your traffic through a single VPN hop. Next, encrypt your DNS, or domain name system. This is the internet system for converting alphabetic names into numeric IP addresses. For example, when a web URL is typed into a browser, DNS servers return the IP address of the web server associated with that name. As stated by the hated one, if you really care about third parties tracking your shopping habits, encrypt your DNS. Android phones with Pi or later support encrypted DNS system-wide. Go to Settings, Network and Internet, Advanced, and then Private DNS. Enter the name of the host name that you would prefer to use. You could even use DNS.Google. I use 1.1.1.cloudflare-dns.com. For iOS, the hated one recommends using the DNS Cloak app. Next, disable personalized advertising. This will restrict how much data that apps can use. On Android, go to Settings, Ads, and then opt out of ads personalization. Next, disable location services. When you need to do something that requires your location, use a web browser instead. An app is basically requiring 24 seven access to your device location in addition to other data. In the PDF document, I provided a good article from Android Police. It provides all of the information you'll need to disable Google location tracking on your Android phone. You'll wanna make sure to disable both location history and web and app activity, in addition to disabling Google location tracking on the web. Next, disable all telemetry or data sharing. So when you're installing apps deselect any data sharing as mentioned by the hated one it's never connected anonymously even if they tell you that and next the hated one recommends switching out all of your main social media apps and use progressive web apps instead or pwas i have made shortcut versions of all of my primary social media apps like facebook twitter and instagram when using a native mobile app you have to surrender all of your local file storage contacts microphone camera location device identifier and more just as a heads up, Instagram does not play nicely with the browser version, so I have a single device with it set up that I use for posting things for the Urban Prepper. I disable its network access using NetGuard when not actively posting a new image. Next, let's talk about lock screen emergency information. Everyone should already be using some sort of authentication on your phone's lock screen. I do not use fingerprints or face recognition. Instead, I prefer to use either a pin, pattern, or password. I could always change those if the data ever gets compromised. However, I can't change my fingerprints or my face. Also, be sure to enable two-factor identification whenever prompted. At the lock screen, you will see text at the bottom that states emergency. I made a video about this a few years back. It allows an emergency responder or someone who finds your phone access to emergency information about you, such as contact information and any special medical needs. So things like medical conditions or medications that you take. I recommend filling out this information just in case you are injured and not contacted during a medical emergency. Now let's talk about the primary apps that I use on my prepper phone. The primary apps on your mobile phone that interact with the outside world are text messaging, using your phone as a phone, web browsing, internet search engine, and email. I no longer use the default mobile apps for these items as much as possible. Fortunately, there are some great replacement options out there that are more privacy-minded. For encrypted text messaging, I use Signal. Signal uses standard cell phone numbers as identifiers and uses end-to-end -end encryption to secure all communications to other Signal users. So if you have Signal and your friend has Signal, you could talk to each other completely encrypted. You're also able to make voice calls to each other also encrypted. This app is awesome. You should definitely get it. 
For web browsing, I use the Brave app. Brave is a free and open source web browser that's based on the Chromium web browser. It blocks ads and website trackers and provides a way for users to send cryptocurrency contributions to websites and content creators. I've been using this app for years now and really like it. For my search engine, I no longer use Google, I use DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is an internet search engine that emphasizes protecting searchers' privacy and avoiding filter bubble personalized search results. DuckDuckGo distinguishes itself from other search engines by not profiling its users or showing all users the same search results for a given search term. I have this set up as my default search engine on all of my devices. Not just my phone, but also my laptop. And for encrypted email, you should get ProtonMail. Even if you're already using another email service, just pick up the ProtonMail version of your particular email name. ProtonMail offers encrypted email, which makes it virtually impossible for anyone to read it except for the sender and the recipient. I've slowly been trying to transition my email over to ProtonMail. Now let's start going through all the various other apps that I have installed on my Prepper phone. I have them all categorized and stored in their own separate folders. The ones that I'm gonna go over in this particular video are just a few of the ones that I enjoy for each category. Let's start off first with comms. Here are a few of the apps that I have installed that are related to comms or communication. There are a lot of options out there, but these are the primary ones that I've been using. Since your phone is basically a comms device, these apps are more for off-grid communication purposes. Starting off first, I like the Scanner Radio, which is a fire and police scanner. You can listen to live audio from over 7,000 fire and police scanners, weather radios, amateur radio repeaters, air traffic, and marine radios from all around the world. I like turning this one on and just listening in to what's going on out there in the world. The next app is the Repeater Book. This is available for both Android and iOS, and it's used to find repeaters. It's powered by the popular community database of repeaterbook.com and the software of zbm2.com. Repeater Book enables you to easily find repeaters across the world without network connection using the Repeater Book directory. You could use GPS, search, or network to find repeaters. It displays the distance, heading, and full repeater details. Also for comms, I have the GoTenna app. This is for off-grid communication. I recently did a review video of the GoTenna mesh, which I think is a very interesting option for off-grid communication using mesh networking. So GoTenna provides a robust, secure, decentralized communication networks compatible for your phone. The GoTenna app works with your device to enable 100% off-grid messaging, GPS, and other features like push for help. You need to have a GoTenna mesh device to be able to use this, but I've been liking it over the past year for off-grid communications in an urban environment. Now let's go over a few of the apps that I have for tools. I have a few apps that provide me with various tools for conversions, calculations, and measuring. The first app is called Smart Tools. This one's only available on Android and costs $3, but it has some really handy tools, calculations, conversions, and meters. So Smart Tools contains six individual apps that does a variety of handy conversions and measurements like rulers, units, distance, sound, compass, and light. As a backup tool app, I also have ConvertBee. I use this as a currency and unit converter. This one's also only available on Android, but there are alternative versions on iOS. ConvertBee is an easy to use currency converter and unit converter for length, width, temperature, volume, and multiple other units of measurement. Now let's talk over some of the apps that I use for navigation purposes. Navigation is a main capability when having a smartphone. These are just a few of the navigation apps that I use, which are mainly for offline maps, both for city streets, in addition to hiking. For driving navigation, I use Waze. Waze is really awesome. It tells you about traffic, construction, police crashes, and more in real time. If traffic is bad on your route, Waze will change it to save you time. However, be careful, it is owned by Google now. So I use my firewall NetGuard to turn off its network access when it's not in use. That said, it's still a really awesome app. For offline maps and navigation, I have OSM AND. OSM AND is an offline navigation application with access for free, worldwide, and high quality offline maps. It also has information about sea objects and contour maps of sea depth. This one's a really nice offline map and navigation app for both Android and iOS. I have a few more apps for offline topo maps. The next one is Backcountry Navigator Topo GPS. You could use offline topo maps and GPS on hike trails without cell service. The GPS on your Android phone, for example, could get its position from satellites and you don't need to rely on your data plan to get maps. I also have another map app called All Trails that's for hiking, running, and mountain bike trails. It's also available for both Android and iOS. The description of All Trails says, discover nature with hiking, biking, backpacking, and running trails around the world. Log your hike, walk, run, or mountain bike ride with our GPS activity tracker. Download offline maps and get to the trailhead and start your outdoor adventure. Even though I like all of these various navigation apps, I still don't trust them. So when they're not in use, I have them disabled from the network. I also have a few apps for first aid purposes. 
While it's better to have actual training for applying first aid, I still have some apps to use for reference for various first aid situations. The app that I like the best is called First Aid by the American Red Cross. It has videos, interactive quizzes, and also step-by-step -step instructions to guide you through everyday first aid scenarios. It's also fully integrated with 911 so you could call EMS from the app at any time. And the final apps that I like to go over for this particular video are for Intel purposes. Knowledge is power. So I have several different apps that provide offline information for general knowledge in addition to survival tips. Let's start going through those now. The first app is called Kiwix. I use this to have an offline copy of Wikipedia. That's right, you could have all of the information that's available on Wikipedia in an offline version that could be read through Kiwix. I made a video about this several years back. So the app has a lightweight piece of software for reading bigger files stored on your device or SD card. Once it's installed, you could select which additional content you would like to download and be ready for when your phone is off grid. I use it for having a completely offline version of Wikipedia with photos. This one's awesome and I highly recommend it. I should probably update my offline version of Wikipedia every month, but I do it around every six months or so. The next app is the Offline Survival Manual. So this is a survival manual that contains a lot of information that's able to be accessed while completely offline. It contains information on how to make a fire, build shelter, find food, heal, and other useful content in case of an emergency. In addition, I also have the SAS Survival Guide. This is based off of a book that's been popular for decades now, the SAS Survival Guide, which has been the definitive guide for surviving any situation anywhere in the world. However, the SAS Survival Guide costs around $6 on Android and iOS. I actually prefer the offline survival manual for my phone. The next app is PlantNet Plant Identification. This one's available for both Android and iOS. So PlantNet is an application that allows you to identify plants simply by photographing them with your smartphone. It's very useful when you don't have a botanist on hand. I've been getting into gardening lately, and sometimes there's some weeds and strange plants in our yard that I have no idea what they are, and I use the PlantNet identification app for that purpose to help me identify them. Another great app for people that have a CCW is the CCW50 State. This one's available for both Android and iOS. It does cost $2, and it has a lot of information with regard to laws and reciprocity. It gives you direct information needed to follow the maze of arcane, complicated, and dissimilar gun laws in each state and each situation. It has an easy-to-use user interface, and laws and reciprocity is updated monthly or more. And the last app that I have is called Knots 3D. This one's available for both Android and iOS. It costs $5 and it teaches you how to tie knots. Now, to be honest, I'm not the best at knot tying, so I have to have a reference guide such as Knots 3D to help me practice. It has more than 140 knots and it's basically the go-to reference that I use for practicing and having fun. Again, Knots 3D. And that concludes all of the apps, OS level modifications, and external add-ons that I've done on my prepper phone. Nowadays, it's basically impossible to go completely off grid and to be completely private. But I think that some of the various privacy and security measures that I put into place on my phone make me at least a little bit more annoying to track or hack. While these smartphones are extremely handy for us to have for EDC purposes, we should all probably be a little bit more careful with regard to our privacy and security when having these devices. I do not like the idea of our phones being used as spying devices for every single person on the planet. That's going to do it for this video featuring the Prepper phone. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. So using the information provided in this video in addition to the PDF, hopefully it will make your smartphone a little bit more secure, a little bit more privacy minded, in addition to providing you with various capabilities for EDC and off-grid situations. So leave your comments below in the comments section regarding this video. I'm sure there's some things that you also would include for the ideal Prepper phone, both from an OS modification standpoint in addition to an app level. So leave those comments below in the comments section and stay tuned for more videos. See you guys next time. Thank you.